What's going on? Welcome to Classy Tacos. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're installing our in-house fab snorkel, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, there's not too many of these in the States. They're made in Australia for the Hilux series pickups. Uh, sold here by a company called Sloop Imports. So I was able to get my hands on one. And, and reason being is I don't like any of the other brands that sell here in the States. I'm not a fan. A lot of people love them. I don't really like the way they look. So this one is kind of more my style. I like the way it looks and I think this could be the first install of this snorkel on a third gen here in the States. So if I screw this up, we're going to screw this up together and it is what it is. I already made it up in my mind. I'm just going to end up buying another fender if it goes really terrible. So that being said, there's always a big argument about do you really need a snorkel? I will say no right off the bat. If you stay on the pavement or don't really do too many trail rides or go off road, you don't really need one. Uh, some people think they really look cool, but you don't need one. Um, what changed my mind, I was on a trail ride and we had someone hydro lock. So that really gets you thinking. Um, and it makes you want to be like, hey, maybe this isn't bad. This is kind of cheap insurance. Uh, when I got back from that trail ride, I opened up my air box and I looked inside of it and I definitely had some water. Plus I had some dust in there. Like you can tell where like muddy water had gotten in and kind of dried on the bottom of it because you do have a kind of like a peephole at the bottom of your air box to let water out. So, so all of that kind of together led me down the path of like, all right, man, we should just get one for insurance. And since I don't like any of the ones sold here, that's when I started looking and I found the company in-house. So they are a little expensive, um, but I'm willing to pay more money for one that I actually like the way it looks and is just as functional. So I'm going to break into that today. Let me show you what comes in the package that I got and we'll go over all the pieces real quick. So. Right, so here's everything that came in the package. This is just a silicone coupler. It looks like a reducer, probably four to three inches, six inch stainless steel tube, silicone elbow, got a little trim piece for the cuts, standard hose clamps. You've got two nut certs or rib nuts, whatever you want to call them. This is what holds everything to the A pillar. Um, the stencil and instructions. The stencil is a little sketch, so that's why I'm a little bit nervous about it. Not, I don't think it's greatly detailed, but we'll do what we got to do. And then the actual intake right here, which is powder coated stainless, uh, four inch powder coated stainless. So that's it. First thing we're going to do is wipe everything down over here. Um, and get some tape up. So up next, we're going to get into just popping off the inner fender liner. It gives us access to the port where the inlet is for the intake. So we've got a couple of screws and some clips lying around. So these clips are a pain. So just take your time with them. Now, uh, you can see where this intake is right here, and look at that. See that? That's all from right inside of the scoop that goes into the intake. You can kind of get an idea for it right here. You see how, look at all this. Even though it was covered, see all the water that splashes up in there and all the dirt? Uh, th this is why I believe it's a good idea, just for insurance. Like I said, I don't expect to submarine anything, but, you know. Just a little bit of insurance. I mean, you can see all the dirt right there and all the mud that got in there. All right, so I'm just going to pop open the air box. Get this thing up and out of the way. Yeah, I could probably use a new filter too. I got, we got the air box on there. Now you can take a good look at this entire section is hanging outside of the engine. And that's where, you know, look at all the dirt and water that gets into there. So that's why, that's why we're doing this. You can say you don't need one all you want, but you know, I would rather not have that in there or at least a little higher and make water kind of a little harder to get in here. So there's an idea, the inside of that. Pop this piece off. It looks like there's just two little clips here. So I'm just going to, oh, there you go. 
perfect. Now you see around here where it's kind of smooth, that's not smooth, you got a little tab there, you got tabs here, this tab, this tab, and this right here. That's all got to get smoothed out real quick, so we're going to knock that out because you want a nice seal right in here. Let me, see, let me make sure I got that on camera. So, those tabs right here, that little spot, this little ridge here, all of that needs to get smoothed out. We're going to clean it up, get rid of it all because you want a nice clean seal right in through here, you know, to avoid all of this. So. I'm gonna go get this cleaned real quick and get that done. All right, so here's an idea of what I'm left with. Kind of sanded it down. I hit the whole side around it just to kind of roughen it up a little bit. But we got rid of those tabs that were gonna be in the way. Then we're gonna take this 90 degree elbow um, and get it on here. So with this, this elbow is really tight onto here. Like you're gonna watch me struggle for a little bit. So when you get it on here, try to get it on here, you know, and how the box sits. Don't get it on here like this because you're going to have to take it off. That's how tight it is. It is pretty tight. So just like that. All right, here we go. All right, so pretty much this is what you're left with. Um, I can still kind of pull it and move it just a little bit if I need to, but this is on there like super tight. Um... I might come back later with like a larger bank clamp and bank clamp it, but right now this is tight. I'm going to, just for insurance, just a little bit of gasket maker. I'm just gonna throw a bead, just trying to like really small little bead around those edges real quick. All right, I'm gonna throw the air box back in the truck. All right, so here's the air box back in. Uh, since I'm so tight, with how much room I have here. I removed the windshield washer tank from right here just so I could maneuver this because it was not easy getting that silicone piece through that hole since it's 90 degree bend. So what I ended up doing, here's uh, the inside so you can see. What I ended up doing is kind of pinching this and shoving it through the hole and then kind of getting it into work. But it, it's a lot easier and I can make sure now I got a nice good seal. Um, on the inside of this versus trying to attach it under here. So just be prepared. It was not easy getting it through this hole, but sitting right here. Um, and now we're gonna move on to our cuts. All right, so at this point, we're kind of ready to cut and start drilling, but I just wanted to share with you guys, here's where it kind of can get a little sketchy because, so this says rubber push rubber for left. I'm guessing I'm pushing this like this and I'm lined up on the inside, the left side of this rubber piece. This says to attach it to the top. I am on the top there. And then I'm on the inside of that plastic clip. So I'm not really at the plastic clip. So it's like if I stay here on the left side of the rubber, I'm not on the plastic clip. So my thought is if, I, if I'm wrong forward a little bit, it might be better because I can kind of cut out the back and the snorkel will cover it and kind of let it sit in. If I'm off backwards, I'm gonna have a gap here in the front. I'm trying to avoid the gap in the front. So, I mean, that I think is as good as I can get on the rubber, super close to the plastic clip. And I think everything else, we'll just kind of figure out here and we'll take it from there. So, time to cut. All right, this is it. So I'm just gonna drill a little pilot hole in the center here and then kind of work around it. But oh, this is it and there's no going back now. So since we're going to be drilling some bigger holes and some cutting, I'm going to just cover up the intake real quick so, with a hat, and that way it'll stop anything from like, you know flying into the intake. Okay. There we go. So this is the cutout that's gone. So now I'm going to come back and if you look, I'm, you can see I'm on the inside. Let me get you like right here. What I did here was cut on the inside of that black line because when I cut this piece out, I'd rather it be tight and then we can kind of work around with a little bit of grinding.
I decided here not to use a four inch hole saw just because the hole for the intake is a bit of an oval shape and that bottom piece was really close to the bend in the fender so I didn't want to cut through that bend. Right here, I'm just trying to clean up the hole nicely. I'm doing a whole lot of back and forth, kind of taking my time. You'll see me bring the stencil down, check the hole, remark if I need to mark anything. And then also here in a second, I'll start throwing the intake on. I will say I had uh, some extra trim lying around, so I didn't actually use the trim that they sent to do my test fitting, just because I didn't want to mess it up. That right there is just some trim I had lying around so that I can test fit the, uh, the snorkel because you definitely don't want it to get all scratched up through that hole. All right. That's where we're at. This is what that ridiculous hole that we're left with looks like. I'm gonna just throw this over here and then hit up all those edges with some camo paint before we throw our edging in. Perfect. All right. Now, I'm gonna let that chill for a little bit. Let's get this guy on there. So this is the one that actually came with the kit. This looks to be like really good quality. Um, I'm going to put the opening over here so that it's behind the actual tube. All right. That's in there. Nice. And tight. So. What you, I'm going to get these connections down here uh, set up. All right, we are down here. Holes done. This is set up. We're going to start putting our connections together here just so that when we come in with our the actual intake, it is, you know, everything is kind of ready to go here. So we're going to take this piece of tubing and we're going to put that into the 90 degree elbow in there nice and good i'm gonna take a bang clamp when you put these clamps make sure you put these pointing down so you can kind of screw them in later because if not they're just going to get very difficult um so i'm going to just tighten it a little bit i'm going to leave everything pretty loose all right cool so we're going to get the snorkel in and we're going to put our straight piece onto that piece with some band clamps and this area will be almost done. So right here, I'm just doing a whole lot of back and forth, testing, fitting, pulling, pushing. There is a good amount of massaging that takes place. I did want to make sure that I had a good tight seal. So just be prepared for that. A lot of back and forth, checking, testing, making sure it all looks right. All right, so we're at the A pillar. I got my holes marked. I'm going to, so this is where some people kind of get a little freaked out because you do got to drill in here and we're going to have to use rivet nuts or nut search. So I got my holes marked where I want it to go and kind of where I need to kind of force it to get into and stay at. So I'm just going to make a pilot hole real quick here. All right, so here's where it gets a little nuts. You're going to kind of just move this up out of the way and we're going 1132s. I have it marked. Let's see how this goes. Just a little quick check on the nuts right here. Feel like we have to open it up just a tiny little bit more. You do want to be careful. You don't want to go through the front here. So just kind of take your time here and go slow. There's really no rush. So before I forget, again, a little bit of gasket maker, just throwing it in here. All right, the rest I can wipe off later. All right, so you're just gonna grab your nut cert tool and all the way up in there. That one's a little tight. 
I don't really want to open it up anymore, so I'm gonna see if I can just kind of perfect. All right, our nut certs are in. That's why you want to leave kind of everything down there pretty loose because you want to be able to kind of force and play with these around a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'm happy with right there. And the final test is just make sure the door opens and closes, right? Let's uh, see. Oh yeah. So no issues with the door opening and closing. So here's an idea of what it looks like. I did have to adjust the ditch light in just a tiny little bit. So it looks like I wanted to test this. Yeah, it looks like my, my ditch light is gonna run up into it. All right, here it is. So you get an idea how much cleaner that looks than what is out on the market right now. I did kind of screw up right in here. This gap is a little bit bigger than I would have wanted, but not bad. Everything else kind of fits in pretty nice and tight. You can kind of shift it around a little bit. And then if you look down in here, it's all siliconed and in there nice and tight. And then the connection to the intake box is inside of here. So there's no connection out here. It's actually taken care of inside. So I like that as well. I'm going to tighten. Um, everything up and then see if I might not put the fender back the liner we'll see but installs done guys I hope you enjoy hope you like it I'll get you uh some nice shots out here in the sun here in a second but that's uh that's what we're looking at <laughs>